Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the first stage of photosynthesis which is the light dependent reactions. The light dependent stage of photosynthesis involves a series of reactions and it is the first stage in photosynthesis. Second one is the light independent reactions. Now the light dependent reactions occur within the chloroplast specifically on the thylakoid membrane or if you have stacks of them, it's known as a granum for singular or grana for plural. The light independent reactions, which is in a different video, that occurs in the stroma, which is this fluid filled center. So the light dependent reactions are the first stages of photosynthesis. And they're called this because they require light energy. That light energy and also water, one of the reactants in photosynthesis, are used to ultimately create ATP and reduced NADP. And these two molecules are needed for the light independent stage. So the key reactions that happen here is first of all, we have photoionization of chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll is absorbing that light energy and photoionization occurs. The light energy absorbed by the chlorophyll is also then used for the photolysis of water. And then from those two stages, chemiosmosis can occur, which ultimately results in the production of ATP and reduced NADP. Now, photoionization. So again, we've got that term photo, so we know it's to do with light energy. And ionization is the loss of an electron. So light energy is causing electrons to be lost from chlorophyll. So that's what's happening in this stage. The light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll. And that light energy is picked up by the electrons. And because they gain energy, they then become excited. That's the phrase we give um, this state. They've become excited. They raise up an energy level and this causes them to break free and release themselves from the chlorophyll molecule. So that is why the chlorophyll has been ionized. It's lost an electron and it's due to the energy gained from absorbing the light energy. And that energy from the electrons that have been released goes towards making ATP and also reduced NADP, photolysis of water. And the way to remember this is perhaps pronounce it differently. Photolysis. Photo in biology, whenever you see this term, refers to light. And lysis means to break apart or to split something. So photolysis or photolysis of water means light energy is splitting water. And the word equation or symbol equation for this, we can see below. So the water molecule is split into oxygen, electrons and protons. And the protons, which are hydrogen ions, are picked up by NADP, which is a coenzyme. And that is how we get the reduced NADP or NADPH being formed and that is needed in the light independent reaction. The electrons are passed along a chain of protein carriers and they release energy, which is needed in this stage. The oxygen is not used in photosynthesis, so it is technically a waste product of photosynthesis. However, it could be used in respiration or it might simply diffuse out of the leaf through the stomata. So that's the final step where we can actually fully see how NADP um, H, which is reduced NADP, and ATP are created. So it's a series of steps. Step one, the electrons that were gained from the photoionization of chlorophyll are picked up by proteins which are embedded in the membrane in the um, chloroplast. And that's what we can see here. This electron, which would have come from the chlorophyll, is picked up by this protein and then it passes along what we call an electron transfer chain. And those are just proteins embedded in the membrane. Now, as those electrons move to each protein, they release energy at each movement. And that energy is used to pump the protons across the membrane. So protons that are within the stroma of the chloroplast are then using the energy 
from those electrons to be actively transported across that membrane into the thylakoid lumen or intermembrane space. Now that results in a high concentration of protons in this intermembrane space or the thylakoid lumen because we're also getting protons from photolysis of water which we can see here. So we end up with lots of protons on this side of the membrane and very few in the stroma on the other side of the membrane. And we describe this as an electrochemical gradient because it is um, an ion, it has a charge. So that's where the electro part comes in. So because we've now got lots and lots of protons on one side of the membrane, facilitated diffusion occurs. But the only protein that protons or the hydrogen ions can diffuse through is this protein here, which happens to be ATP synthase. And this is an enzyme which catalyzes the reaction of ADP and an inorganic phosphate joining together to make ATP. And as protons are diffusing through ATP synthase, that actually causes a change in shape of the protein at the top here. And it's that change in shape which provides the energy to catalyze this reaction. So that's how the ATP is produced. The final step is looking at how the reduced NADP is created. And that is the protons, which are then all moving back down their electrochemical gradient into the stroma. Some of those protons will be recycled and pumped back around again so the process can continue. But some of the protons are picked up by the coenzyme NADP. And when NADP picks up the protons, it becomes reduced. Um, so it picks up the protons, but also it picks up the electrons at the end of the electron transfer chain. So that's why we describe it as being reduced, because it picked up the electron as well as the proton. And that's why sometimes you'll see it written as NADPH, because a proton plus an electron makes a hydrogen atom. Or AQA tends to just phrase it as reduced NADP, because in picking up that proton and the electron, gaining the electron means it is reduced. So that is the stage of chemiosmosis, this idea of creating an electrochemical gradient, so then that the protons can move down that gradient, and that enables the production of ATP. So in summary, the light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll, and that leads to the photoionization of chlorophyll and the release of electrons as they become excited and raise an energy level. The light energy that is absorbed by chlorophyll is also used in the photolysis of water, and that results in the production of protons, electrons, and oxygen. Some of the energy from the electrons that have been released in this photoionization and in the photolysis of water are then used to ultimately create ATP and reduce NADP through chemiosmosis. And that's what this final point is summarizing. The production of that ATP involves the electrons that have been released moving along the electron transfer chain and the movement of protons from the stroma into the intermembrane space. The protons then move down their electrochemical gradient back into the stroma. That is what is catalyzing the production of ATP through the enzyme ATP synthase. I hope you found that summary helpful. If you have, don't forget to check out my other videos or if you want even more detail, then I've got my A-level notes linked in the description.